tal tangan want to conteng conteng ah. Okay. So, good morning. Once again, I'm going to be sharing my screen. So, you guys who are doodling on the jam, what you could see your products on the screen as well. Okay. So, good morning, class. In today's, in today's Google Meet, we are going to do mostly discussions. And I'm going to start with an overview of the lesson. Y'all, can you can you not doodle on the jam board while I am doing the overview? After the overview, you can doodle on the jam board. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a very quick overview of chapter three. Okay, so this is what we have in chapter three. In the video lessons and in the notes that I gave you, you should be able to learn about selection and speciation. Under 3.1 selection, we have natural selection and artificial selection. Di bawah natural selection, kita ada stabilizing, disruptive, and directional selection. Whereas under artificial, we have outbreeding and inbreeding selection. Can anybody open their mic and tell me the definition for natural selection? Anybody? Natural selection? Who are you typing through chat? Ada tiga definition yang kita boleh guna untuk natural selection. If you could share one of them, anybody? Uh, individuals which are better adapted will survive and produce more offspring. Okay, correct Akil. Individuals would, that are better adapted to the environment will survive and produce more and more offspring. So if you can live long enough to make babies, you will have more babies and your babies will live longer to make more babies than other people's babies. That is the concept of natural selection. Under natural selection, we have stabilizing, directional and disruptive selection. And I don't want to explain all of that all over again. So what we have here, as you can see on the screen, and if you follow the link to the Jamboard, you should be able to see we have six examples. Three of them you can find in your lecture notes, and three are new. So I want to split you into breakout rooms. In the breakout rooms, you will discuss amongst each other. What do you think this type of natural selection is? After you have discussed and you agree with your teammates, you can type using a text box. Conto, if this one you think it is. Stabilizing selection, then you write stabilizing. Okay, make sure it fits lah in that little box. Or you could also write using a pen if you want to do that. But make sure you don't delete any of the actual text. I am sharing the editing link to you because I trust you. Don't misuse my trust. And berdasarkan teks yang saya bagi ni, kamu rasa setiap kumpulan patut ada berapa minit untuk bincang? Lima minit cukup. Five minutes, okay? Enough. Okay. So, I'm going to split you into eight rooms. So, every room should have about like five people. I'm going to go in and out of each breakout room. And... Hope you'll be okay. Okay. 
Okay, so you should be entering into your breakout rooms. Ada yang a few yang ter left meeting. Okay, hold on. Okay, sorry. I closed the breakout rooms. Kejap. Okay, sorry, I had a bit of a hiccup. Sorry, ada masalah technical sikit. Sekejap, sekejap. Sorry, ada masalah technical sekejap. Uh, no, no, V isn't back yet. Alright. Saya belum siap bagi, bagi instruction, sorry. Okay, I'm going to split you into a few rooms. When you enter into your room, baru saya start timer. Time to time, I'm going to go into each of your rooms to check on you. And what you should do while you are in the breakout room is go through the six examples. Setiap kumpulan, mesti tengok ke enam-enam contoh yang saya bagi dalam Jamboard. So you have to go through all six. And then when you have your answer, you can write or type it in the boxes here. If you need more time, of course, you can have more time. But I hope that we'll be able to end the discussions in about 5 to 10 minutes. Okay? So after I set up the breakout rooms, you are going to leave the main call and into the breakout room. Kamu akan masuk kumpulan kecil. And I'm not sure how it will look on the recording. I'm just going to try to try to do this because it's my first time using this as well. Okay, everybody, welcome back. I'm going to be ending the breakout rooms. So everybody should be coming back here in 30 seconds. The call is still being recorded. I will try to edit out the discussion when I before I upload the video to YouTube. Okay, welcome back everybody. You should be coming back to the main call. You can of course still access the the Jamboard, no problem. Okay, so we have 39 people back, 40 people back. And a few more should be coming back soon, 41. Okay, ada yang lain tidak stable mungkin. Alright, so welcome back everybody. How was the hell that was known as break room? Is it okay? Okay, eh. miss. Or, I wish we never have to do this again, miss. Please don't. Okay, me. Okay, all right. So, the ones that are okay are probably the ones who got a good group and have been actually discussing. So, that's good. Um, I hope it's a positive or at least a neutral experience for you. But if it was negative, then I will what to do. That's just how life is. Anyway, all right. I saw that you guys had fun with the jam board good for you and we are now going to go through each of your uh, discussions so now i'm sharing the screen so no not tapi macam tiba-tiba gitu miss all right so i hope next time i'll be able to make it a bit less uh sudden and a bit more engaging okay so Yang mencoteng pada slide ini boleh berhenti mencoteng. Terima kasih. 
Ah, apa yang tu conteng ni tadi tidak dapat padam. Okay. Oh dear. Okay, all right. We should be back. Right, now I'm going to go through each of the examples that you have already written answers to and we're going to go through them. So, ini adalah tiga contoh pertama adalah contoh yang mudah. If you have any problem with my voice or I'm not clear, you can ask me to repeat. Ini adalah tiga contoh yang lebih mudah. So, tiga contoh pertama ni dengan cepat sajalah. So, this is in your lecture notes. Example one, human birth weight. I ask you what type of natural selection is this? Correct, it is a stabilizing selection. So, siapa-siapa yang tulis stabilizing selection? Betul. It's not directional selection. Sebab kalau directional selection, dia akan pilih phenotype, satu phenotype yang extreme. Phenotype yang intermediate dan phenotype extreme yang satu lagi akan kurang uh, chance untuk survive. Okay, so the directional selection is strong. All right, moving on to example number two. This is also in your lecture note, the example with peppered moths. So those of you who wrote directional selection, you are correct. Directional selection, directional selection, directional selection, directional selection. Hey, disruptive. Siapa ada disruptive ni? That disruptive selection is incorrect. Because if you read the text, you would be able to see that this is talking about the example after industrial revolution due to coal burning factories. So, sebelum revolusi industri, memang pokok-pokok dia nampak macam ni. Tapi selepas revolusi industri, banyak sudah kilang-kilang, banyak asap, pokok-pokok pun nampak lebih hitam. So, situasi sekarang menjadi macam ni. So, this is actually directional selection that favors one extreme phenotype which is black peppered moths rather than white or gray okay and then i'm going to move on to example number three for example number three this is also in your lecture notes the only difference is i choose a different picture this is talking about the beaks of galapagos finches or birds that are on the galapagos islands because of the different availability of food this leads to disruptive selection in the finch populations. So, bagi yang jawab disruptive selection, semua betul. Good job. So far, okay kan? I'm going to move on to example four. So, this one I'm going to read. Example four is talking about feather color in male lazuli buntings. So, lazuli buntings are a bird species that is native to North America. In this species, the feather brightness of the males can vary. So, they can range from brown to bright blue. So, kalau kita tengok di sini, yang paling atas ni, in the picture labeled A, this is the dullest color. Color yang paling uh, tidak menonjol. So, this is the brownish ones. And this down here, that is labeled D, this is the bright blue variety. So, it's going to be a distribution like this lah. Akan ada banyak yang, uh, there will be a range of individuals. So, when you have a habitat with limited nesting sites, so not everybody can mate and make nests and make baby birds, there will be different chance of survival and different reproductive success. Bukan semua dapat buat baby, bukan semua dapat hidup sampai dapat buat banyak baby. So when you're in a habitat with limited nesting site, both the dullest and the brightest yearling males are more successful in obtaining high quality territories and are therefore able to attract females. Yearling, yearling males means these are male birds that are only one year old and it is their first time to mate, find nest, and make baby birds. So, ini adalah jantan yang baru baru matang. So, these and these yearling males will get more chicks. Because 
the birds that are older than them, the adult males, they will tolerate non-threatening dull yearlings and also leave brightly colored yearlings alone. Ja burung jantan yang lebih tua, yang lebih senior, yang lebih tinggi pangkat, dia akan bully yang tengah-tengah. Bila dia tengok yang warna coklat, dia akan rasa, ah, this bird so dull, so brown, so ugly. This bird cannot steal any of my female. I don't need to bully him. When they see the bright colored yearling, they think, okay lah. Ish, kaya kali dia ni, kuat kali dia ni. Look at the color, so strong. I don't need to fight this one. But I will fight these guys in the middle. Who I think I can beat up. Saya rasa saya boleh lawan. Jadi akan lawan yang ini. Kalau saya tidak lawan, nanti dia curi cewek saya. So the older birds will go and get rid of the intermediate. So uh, because this happens, both these groups, meaning the dull colored birds and the very bright colored birds, we will be able to establish territories and attract females. Because they are not bullied by the older bird, they have their own kawasan. And then they have their own kawasan, the female birds will be like, oh my gosh, you have house, Ooh, come let's make baby. And blah, 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 blah. And therefore they are able to make more offspring, able to make more offspring. That is the explanation for this text. If you're not able to understand this, you could ask questions, no problems. You could also think about what is your MUET score. All right, so what type of natural selection is this? So for those who answered disruptive selection, you are correct because it will form this kind of distribution. Those who answer directional are incorrect. That's right, Lily. Sebab di sini dia akan buat curve yang macam ini. Any questions about feather color in male lazuli buntings? Okay, I think you're good. If you have any questions, ask again later. Now I'm going to move on to example number five. Example number five. In desert populations of spiny cacti, they could experience predation by peccaries, which is this thing that is a skunk pig. It's a pig that will consume the fleshy part of the cactus. So this pig will try to eat the cactus. Cacti can prevent themselves from being eaten by increasing the number of spines on the cactus. So kalau dia kurang duri macam ni, babi akan makan dia. Tapi kalau dia ada banyak sikit duri, babi tidak akan makan dia. Good news. However, there is also a selection pressure in the opposite direction because there is a parasitic insect that will lay its eggs in spines if they are densely populated. So when you have a lot of duri, if you're a cactus and you have a lot of duri, this insect will lay its eggs on you. And then when the eggs hatch, they will form little caterpillar things. And then they will eat the cactus flesh, which is not good for the cactus. So terlampau sikit duri bahaya, terlampau banyak duri pun bahaya juga. So in order to manage both of these selection pressures, the cacti experiences stabilizing selection to balance the appropriate number of spines to survive these different threats. So dalam teks pun sudah bagi tahu stabilizing selection, saya lupa untuk padam tadi. So anybody who answered stabilizing selection, got it correct. Kita bagi jawapan free pula. Okay, that one no need to explain more. I'm going to move on to uh, example number six. So example number six is talking about insect pesticide resistance. When the first time you use a pesticide, racun serangga, a small proportion of the nest population, pest population may survive exposure to the material due to their distinct genetic makeup. Bila kamu sembur racun serangga, ada yang mati, ada yang hidup. Yang hidup itu sebab ngam-ngam genetik dia membolehkan dia uh, survive. So the ones that do survive, these individuals, they will pass along the genes for resistance to the next generation. That means next generation of insect is going to be more resistant to your racun serangga. Dia orang lebih rintang ataupun kalis racun. I hope I'm using the right words. So subsequent use of the pesticide will increase the proportion of less susceptible individuals in the population. Maksud ayat kedua adalah 
uh, after the next time you use the racun racun serangga bilangan individu yang kalis racun serangga semakin meningkat that's what this sentence say and then through this process the population gradually re develops resistance to the pesticide Worldwide, more than 500 species of insects, mites, and spiders have developed some kind of pesticide resistance. So, makin banyak kali kita buat begini, makin banyak baby dia dapat, makin banyak insect yang kalis racun serangga. So, the curve is going to start like this. The curve is going to start like this. Later, the curve after many racun serangga, it will become the green one. This is not really stabilizing selection. This is more about directional. Where once the one extreme phenotype is kalis racun. The other one is tidak kalis racun. The intermediate is maybe survive but sick, for example. That is what the phenotype distribution will be like. So this one is actually more to directional selection. Ada yang mau pertikai kan? Ataupun boleh terima jawapan ini. Uh, so means it is directional selection because only uh, only the the leaf where less pesticide put uh, like this i don't know it's directional selection where uh not not talking about where less pesticides would be used it's uh it's talking about the population so populasi dia pada asal ada kumbang yang in, in the original population there are bugs that are not pesticide resistant and there are bugs that are pesticide resistant the one that will not die eh, the one that will die and the one that will not die when exposed to poison so the more times you do this poison the insects that have pesticide resistance will be able to survive longer and produce more babies. So their phenotype will have more babies and the distribution curve will go towards the other side of the graph. Does that make sense, Lim? Oh, okay, okay. So Ms. Desmond, that uh, the insect which have the high pesticide resistance can survive, but the one uh, with like less pesticide resistance or with median pesticide system, uh, maybe we'll feel sick or die a bit. Yes, correct. Uh, okay, okay, thank you, Miss. All right. Okay, so that was uh, our discussion on these six examples using natural selection. Okay, um, I hope, but my idea is that if this is in class, you would have probably better discussion because you can move around and you'll be less sleepy. But I hope this has been beneficial for you. Uh, through this exercise, I wanted you to refresh what you know about natural selection, especially on the three types of natural selection. Very quickly, before we end this section, I just want to ask. Okay, you already answered this question. I wanted to ask which one is better, inbreeding or outbreeding? And it looks like the general understanding is when it comes to artificial selection uh, you guys prefer outbreeding why why you why you want outbreeding takkan boleh pilih nak boleh jawab guys come on why why do you want why do you think outbreeding is better? Sebab inbreeding incest. Okay, inbreeding uh, is incest. So if you have a moral code dari segi etika atau dari segi pandangan agama dan sebagainya, um, 
you could think that inbreeding is not proper and it could lead to some disadvantages. Outbreeding can show more variation according to Rahma and Farhada. Okay, that is correct. More variation. More variation. Is that good variation? How is it good variation? Is there a key word that we usually associate with outbreeding? Something that starts with hatch maybe. Apa antara kebaikan outbreeding yang keyword dia mula dengan H? Increase heterozygous individual. Okay, but not quite what I'm going for. There's an even better hybrid. Hybrid what? Okay, ada hybrid. At the, in the chat, you guys are saying hybrid. Okay, so it has something to do with hybrid. Hybrid vigor. Hybrid vigor is the concept where the hybrid individuals can have more advantageous phenotypes. So if they are animals, maybe they're like bigger in size, they can survive certain environments better. So yeah, like you guys are saying in the chat, hybrid vigor and Shifa said they're high quality phenotypes. Good. So you can see this in plants as well as in animals. Sometimes when we talk about inbreeding and outbreeding, we can use a lot of human, plant, and animal examples, and the results can vary. Most of the time, outbreeding is favored. Okay? Most of the time, memang kita rasa outbreeding lebih bagus because we can have hybrid vigor. But a lot of times, we still do inbreeding. Kebanyakan masa kita masih lagi buat inbreeding. Why do you think that is? Why do you think although outbreeding is good, sometimes we still do inbreeding, especially when it comes to agriculture and farming? To show recessive phenotype, okay, what is it about the, those recessive phenotypes that we want? What are some kind of phenotypes that we want through inbreeding? Homozygous. Mm, homozygous, okay, yeah. Homozygous and recessive phenotypes. So some examples of why we would want to do inbreeding is probably for aesthetic reasons. Probably for aesthetic. In that we like how the animal looks, so we breed it so that it keeps giving us the aesthetic we want. This one we see a lot in household or domestic pets. So kita biak dia untuk aesthetic. So we see this in pets. But sometimes we can do this in farming as well. So memang kadang-kadang kita akan kawinkan uh, baka yang berbeza. Contoh durian, musangking, oh, no. kalau contoh macam betik. Okay, betik baka ni dia kasih kawin dengan betik baka lain. Mangga baka ini dia kawin dengan mangga baka lain. So, but sometimes people still want the more pure or pure bread strains. So mungkin dia mau mangga wani saja. Okay. Maybe they only want that specific breed of mango. So they only grow that mango. Bila dia dapat pokok manggawani tu, dia kawinkan dengan pokok manggawani saja. Dia tidak akan pollinate dengan pokok-pokok mangga lain. Because they want just that. So, yes, in general, outbreeding is better. But sometimes we still use inbreeding for certain purposes. Mostly in agriculture. Okay, so thank you very much. And for that... Now we are going to have a very quick look through 3.2, which is the speciation. Speciation, 
diringkaskan proses penghasilan spesies baru. And under speciation, we learn about the factors that can lead to speciation. So, bila kita ada benda-benda macam ini, like reproductive isolation, genetic drift, hybridization, and adaptive radiation, not all the time, but sometimes it can lead to new species forming. Sometimes only one factor, sometimes many factors. Many factors together makes one new species. This one I'm not going to go through each and every one. But do you have any questions about 3.2? Sebarang soalan yang kamu mau tanya. Pasal factor-factor involved in formation of new species. What do you guys do? I'm glad to know you're having fun with the jam board. All right, if you have any questions regarding speciation, um, you could ask in the chat. You could open your mic to ask. Anything, anyone? Tiada ni. Tiada? Boleh jawab soalan ya, boleh jawab esai. Alright then. Um, for this chapter, there are quite a few essay questions. Saya tidak wajibkan kamu untuk buat soalan esai, tapi nanti saya bagi sejak answer scheme melalui GC. Kamu boleh cuba tanda sendiri nanti. Uh, or if you have any questions, you don't understand the concept, feel free to ask. Uh, PM to P, PM to Kapelam group or whatever. All right. So that concludes the first bit of our content discussion. We'll have a five minute break now. We'll come back at 11 a.m. to go through the tutorial answers. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, let's have a break. I'll see you guys in five minutes. Thank you. Okay, welcome back, everybody. All right, so we're going to go to the slightly more, um, slightly less exciting part of today's lesson. Uh, if you're using the Jamboard, do you know you can come up with your own Jamboard as well? For you to mess with friends. Anyway, I'm going to close that screen. Kalau kamu masih mau access lepas ni, ya, seperti kamu lah mau access. Okay. The call should still be recorded. I'm going to edit this before I upload it. And we're coming back to this. Okay, so before uh, coming, okay, welcome back, welcome back, guys. I would like to ask a question first before we move on. About the objective questions for each chapter, kan? Kan setiap chapter, bila kamu buka soalan tutorial dia, dia ada soalan 1 sampai 10 macam ni. 
So far for chapter 1 and chapter 2, I have been asking you those questions during class time through Telegram polls. Now I'm opening a poll here to ask your general opinion. Bila saya mau kamu hantar ataupun jawab soalan objektif ini, lebih sesuai saya buat soalan dia di Telegram macam yang saya sudah pernah buat sebelum ini ataupun lebih sesuai saya buat Google Form dan kamu jawab melalui Google Form. Which one is better? Um, uh, for me, I prefer Google Form, Miss. Any reason you prefer Google Form, Nadi? Ada sebab kah saja saja? Sebab saja saja, Miss. <laughs> Tapi poll pun okey, bro, Miss. Poll pun okey. Cuma kalau personal preference, lebih suka Google Form lah. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. So y'all are still, uh, y'all are still answering the poll. So I'm gonna let you answer for a little bit. Checking the messages. Okay. Nothing in messages. Has the line been okay this week? Line okay ka di college? Yang di rumah na pecakap lah. Kamu, kamu punya line di rumah there is. Okay, while well, I'm waiting for a few more people to answer, can I ask which block is under quarantine now? Block B masih quarantine dah ini? Ya, Miss. Kami masih quarantine lagi. Alamak, kasihan. Okay. Um, stay negative. Keep positive attitude. And block C, start quarantine juga? Belum ni, kami masih tidak quarantine, masih free. Okay. Tiada quarantine, so hopefully tidak perlu quarantine dan tiada kes di block C. Alright, that's good. And then, about next week, we are still waiting for confirmation if it's gonna be face-to-face -face or what we're doing this week hopefully it will be face to face i mean even uh, kalau kamu tidak dapat hadir kelas next week kalau sudah face to face it's okay we can always make up for the time uh, during another slot so boleh saja ganti kelas nanti untuk benda yang perlu face to face kalau next week kita mula face to face hopefully tutorial Kemungkinan kita masih lagi buat online Google Meet macam ni, tapi at least lab kita akan usahakan untuk bersemuka. After that, it will depend on the weekly cases in Camel, and I will decide whether it's going to be online or offline beginning of the week. Okay, so we have the results from the poll here. So far, the general vote out of 37 people in your 69 people class, 69 is 24 of you choose Telegram and 13 of you prefer Google Form. If, since this is how the vote looks, it's a 2 to 1 vote, I'm gonna go and stick with Telegram. So soalan ni nanti saya akan buat di Telegram. Sila jawab. Thank you. There's 69 people in my class. There should be 69 responses in the Telegram polls. Okay, 69. All right, I'm gonna end the poll. Thank you very much. I, yeah, 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 yeah. And now we are gonna go and discuss these things. Okay, saya harap kamu sudah cuba untuk jawab soalan objektif ini. If any problems, you can ask. If not, I'm moving on. Any problem? Any question? All right. Then we are only going to discuss the part B, structure question. So if you already look through the questions, you will see question one, okay, berkaitan. Question two is out of syllabus, but 
you can try to answer that if you want. Question three in syllabus must do. Essay question has all the fun stuff that you should be remembering. So do try the essay question if you have time. I'm going to post the answer scheme in the GC. So I'm going to go to this. It's new app. We're going to be doing structured questions. Saya baca solat. The graphs in, in figure one below show the normal distribution of early population of an organism living in three different environments, environment one, two, and three. The arrow shows the direction of natural selection. So, ini adalah spesies yang sama. Uh, satu organism di tiga persekitaran yang berbeza. So, in the first environment, the selection pressure is like this. Second environment, the selection pressure is like this. The third environment, selection pressure is against this. And question A, sketch, shirt, eh, sketch curves to show the effect of natural selection on the axes below. I'm going to draw. You see if your graph is correct. This one, you should have more. There's something that looks like that. The second one, it should be the kanan sikit graph dia. The third one should be yeah, like that. I hope your graphs are correct. And then you name the type of natural selection, which is shown in graph 1, 2, and 3. Tell me if you have a problem with these answers. So this is what you probably think about when you had our discussion before the break. So I don't think I need to explain a lot. I'm just reading this in case you cannot see my presentation. Graph 1 is stabilizing selection. Graph 2 is directional selection. And graph 3 is disruptive selection. What will happen to the new generation as a result of the type of selection which are shown in graph 3? Okay, so for this question, does anybody have the answer that they want to share? Untuk C. Dah sesiapa mahu share jawapan? Tengok jawapan kamu boleh dapat berapa marka? Reduces genetic variability, okay. Is it, is it gonna reduce genetic variability for disruptive selection? Let me double check. <laughs> for for one C. Okay, then I'm just going to give you my example. Sebelum ada yang tertidur. For this graph, first things first, you can either talk about the genetic variability or talk about the number of individuals for that phenotype. So we can start how Lim starts. Over new generations, there will be increased genetic variability.
environment o ataupun environmental conditions favors two extreme phenotypes and intermediate phenotypes decrease from generation to generation. So if your answer is like mine, this increased genetic variability in population can be one mark. Environmental conditions favors two extreme phenotypes can be the second mark. Intermediate phenotypes decrease can be one mark. Tapi maximum dua mark. Is there any other example of answers? Okay, looks like there isn't. So, begitu saja lah. If you can give more than one point, you would be able to get these two marks. Okay, then I'm going to move on to 1D. Using one suitable example, explain how the above selection can lead to speciation. So, this is referring to C, which is disruptive selection. So, di sini memang kamu gunakan contoh terus. If you're using uh, what you learned in the lectures, you would probably be using the example of Darwin's finches. So here, if I use example of Darwin's finches, saya terus bagi contoh dia lah. In Galapagos Islands. Darwin's finches or the birds there have different beak sizes. And then I need to explain how the big beak tongue twister big beak birds will eat big hard seeds and the small beak birds will eat small soft seeds so to get the two marks first you state what is your example bagi tahu apa contoh kamu Dan ayat kedua, kamu explain uh, apa phenotype yang akan dipilih. So, in this one, the first mark is when I tell that in Galapagos Islands, they are Darwin's finches. Or if I just say Darwin's finches. And then the second mark is when I tell big, big birds will eat big hard seeds. Small, big birds eat small, soft seeds. So, there you can get two marks. If you're using other examples can of course no problem just make sure you are explaining it clearly no need to explain until one whole essay but at least two points any okay okay miss all right thank you yep okay so this is fairly simple uh for question two this is talking about variation, more or less what you learn about in school before. I think you learn about continuous and discontinuous variation when you were in school. So this is more or less that concept. Um, if you want, you could try to answer this as well. It's not that difficult. But I'm not going to focus it right now. You can 
if you want, you can ask me questions at the end of this Google Meet or just check with the answer scheme. I'm going to go to, to question number three. So when we are going to question number three, we are going to 3.2, speciation. First, you need to define the term species. Can anybody give the definition for species? You can type it in the chat as well. Uh, species is a group of population whose members can interbreed under natural condition to produce uh, viable and fertile offspring and reproductively insulate from other populations. Okay. I. All right. So that is good answer. Thank you very much. Correct. I'm assuming you read that from the lecture notes, so I I didn't memorize all that i'm just gonna find it in the lecture note yeah so that's a sp the definition of species group of population can interbreed under natural condition producing viable and fertile offspring and are reproductively isolated from other populations so how do we uh how do we get two marks out of that answer you need to mention that they are a group of populations. Whose members can interbreed of spring and is reproductively isolated from other populations. Okay, so if you give an answer like this, how will the marking be? The marking is gonna be, can interbreed under natural conditions, to produce fertile offsprings and is reproductively isolated from other population, this is one mark. The other mark is talking about a group of populations. Ataupun, uh, kalau kamu tidak cakap a group of populations, you can say it is a group of organisms that share, that possess similar characteristics or physical characteristics or anatomy. Boleh juga untuk ini. But I would prefer this, this normal uh, definition. Nah. Group of populations, members can interbreed be productively isolated from other populations. Okay, and then we move on to question 3b. List two factors that are involved in the formation of a new species. Ada empat factor, kamu senaraikan sahaja dua. So it can be anything yang kita belajar dalam lecture, 
which could be reproductive isolation, kalau kamu tulis isolation saja pun diterima, genetic drift, hybridization, or adaptive radiation. So any two of these can get you two marks. Senaraikan saja dua, boleh dapat dua markah. Tidak semestinya bagi ayat yang panjang-panjang, yang canggih-canggih. Alright, so for question 3C, list three mechanisms that are involved in sympatric speciation. This one should be in the lecture notes as well. Talking about mechanisms involved in sympatric speciation. Oh wait, it's not. Oh dear. Looks like I don't have it in my lecture note. Oh well, then this one I will just give you the answers lah. Okay, so for this one, I didn't put it in. So when you make your own short notes, please include this. Three mechanisms that are involved in sympatric speciation. They will be mutation, mechanical isolation, genetic isolation, hybrid inviability, and behavioral isolation. So kelima-lima ini adalah mekanism yang membolehkan sympatric speciation berlaku. These are five mechanisms that can allow sympatric speciation to occur. They are also, four, four of them are included under reproductive isolation. Kalau kamu tengok empat ini, Mechanical isolation, genetic isolation, hybrid inviability dengan behavioral isolation termasuk dalam faktor reproductive isolation. But for some reason, when these people wrote this question, they wanted to separate it into several different mechanisms. So we're going to just follow that. Mutation could lead to sudden isolation from other members of its population and can lead to sympatric speciation. So for this one, I guess this is a learning experience for you. Any three of these can give you three marks. Okay, Ka, do you need me to explain any of these things? Okay, looks like you're good. Um, then I'm just going to move on to 3D. Explain how genetic drift can lead to speciation in a small population. So some of you would have tried this already. And someone did ask me uh, to double check their answer for this. You may be inclined to answer this question by talking about bottleneck or founder effect. Itu kurang sesuailah. Uh, sebab bila kita perlu jawab soalan ini, kita perlu explain genetic drift secara umum tanpa menggunakan contoh bottleneck and founders population. So this is how my answer scheme looks. I'm just going to show you. Is how my answer scheme looks. Okay, how I would mark this. Random changes in gene frequencies of a small population. There will be random changes that occur 
in gene frequencies of a small population due to random chance events. So random changes in gene frequencies of small population is one. Random e chance events causing the gene population, gene frequency of the small population to be different from parent population is one mark. Could delete an allele from the population or increase frequency of the allele in small population is one mark. Untuk ayat ketiga ini, mungkin juga kamu cakap some alleles are overrepresented and some alleles are underrepresented, also accepted, could be one mark. And could make a species become extinct or more adaptable to an environment is another mark. So any three of these could be three marks. Do you have any other answers that you want me to check right now? To see how many marks it can get. Okay, looks like we don't have any. Uh, begitu sajalah untuk discussion untuk ini. If this chapter is fairly straightforward. Mungkin yang 3.2 sajalah yang membingungkan sedikit. Um, do you want me to go through this again? Or can we move on to chapter 4 next week? Nah, essay ni pandai-pandai lah kamu buat sendiri nanti. And then for this one, uh, for the objective questions, I will post it in Telegram later. I'm going to do it question by question. Okay, ja, all right. Then I'm going to stop sharing this screen. So that is the end of today's lesson. Thank you very much for your patience today, especially as we tried out the breakout rooms and as we went through the tutorial questions for structure. That's pretty much the end of chapter 3. Pendek saja chapter 3. Um, if I have extra material, I will send to you through the Telegram and also through the GC. For those of you who already got your Simon draft feedback, uh, please do your corrections soon. I will open the slot for final draft submission soon. For those who haven't gotten your feedback for your assignment draft, I'm sorry, it's taking me time to mark through them. And I'll try to get them done today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Tapi kalau ada lambat, saya akan bagi extension untuk submission final deadline lah. So it won't be that late. What else do I need to tell you? Yesterday, we had our UPS1. Overall, pretty good marks from you guys. Good job. With um, I didn't do any revision session for you so i'm glad you were able to get such good marks the lowest score unfortunately was 14 over 20 kamu mungkin rasa 14 tu tinggi tapi actually bila gabung-gabung marka ups 14 is actually a bit low i hope you can improve next time uh, for those of you who got 14 but a lot of you got 19 20 marks out of 20 which is really good good job Next UPS, saya belum ada tarik yang tetap lagi. Tapi bila sudah ada, saya akan beritahu kamu. Next week, kita akan masuk kepada chapter 4. Uh, bahan bila sudah tersedia, akan saya submit, akan saya upload di GC dan juga di Telegram. And I think that's pretty much all the discussion from me. If I have anything extra, I'll give it to you in Telegram. Any questions before we end the class? No, okay. Then thank you very much everybody for your time and your attention today. All the best and thank you. Bye. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you, Miss. Bye bye. Bye, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Miss. 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 Thank you, Miss.